Um, so we got disconnected, but I'm back again um, to try to finish the live. We had a good little stream going, so you guys can jump back in the room. Uh, that's one of the things I say. That's why it's important for you when you subscribe to this channel to click the bell to be notified because you never know when I'm going to hop on um, and you know talk answer questions or give feedback or whatever the case may be. Um, if I don't know it, I'm not gonna pretend I'm sitting up here like I do know it. Um, I'm just wanna provide insight to kind of help you guys um, as much as possible. Um, if you're new to this channel, please do me a huge favor and um, subscribe and then click the bell to be notified because like I said, I'm gonna hop on here from time to time, sometimes teaching, sometimes playing, sometimes providing insight, whatever the case may be. Um, and then too, if you've ever heard me mention or talk about Carrie's Camp and you're trying to figure out like, what is that? What is Carrie's Camp? Um, you should go check it out. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. We got people from Jamaica been in the house. That's what's up. What up, Daniel? Um, so yeah, we're here hanging out um, in my hotel. Um, I have to play at a wedding uh, tomorrow here in LA. And so um, that's what's up. Somebody said, have you ever tried John Mayer's signature guitar? Yeah, I played it. I uh, played one at uh, at NAMM a couple years back. And it's cool. It's just not really uh, the vibe for me. Because it's, it's, again, it's just another, it's a Strat style. And I've got a lot of Strats. Um, but it's it's cool. I don't want to, like, like, I'm downplaying it. It's just like, it just wasn't my vibe. Hello from Cape Cod. That's what's up. I just joined the camp. That's what's up, Daniel. Welcome to the camp, man. Welcome to the camp. We got campers in the house tonight. That's what's up. If you're... If you've ever heard me mention it and you're trying to figure out what is this thing, what is this camp they keep talking about, just check it out for yourself. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com, and you're not going to be upset or mad that you did. It's definitely going to really give you the tools that you need to unlock the fretboard and really impact your playing. So that's really what it's all about. So if you got any questions tonight, um, it could be gear related, it could be practice related. Somebody was talking about like, how do you balance your schedule? Um, how do you do various things like that or whatever? So you should definitely, this is an opportunity to ask those questions because you know I'm here to, to help out and try to provide as much information and insight as possible because I want you guys to be the best as possible. That's really what it's all about. So um, if you're brand new to this channel, do me a huge favor. Number one, subscribe and then click the bell to be notified. Um, so that way you don't, you don't ever miss any opportunity when I hop on because it could be any time. What are you using for this gig? I am using my PRS um, and I'm using my Helix and I had Bad Cat um, deliver me um, an amp for tonight or tomorrow. It says, yes, it crashed when you were explaining. Yeah, so when I was explaining, I got a phone call. Somebody was asking about some Helix gear. So that's what it is. Congratulations on 100,000. Thank you, thank you. Um, what are some core progressions that I should become familiar with? Mr. Red, if you're already in the camp, there's plenty of practice tracks that I do common core progressions that you could be familiar with. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Hey, Carrie, um, how do I apply knowledge to music theory to actually making music? Um, Mad Cow, if you are a camper, if you want to understand how to do that, you should become a camper. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com, so I can show you how to do that, to really apply the theory of it and with the core progression, so I got you. Um, I have a PRS parlor for my car. Sweet. I'm about to go get my PRS so y'all can see it. This is the one that I'm using for this uh, gig tomorrow. So it is originally a DGT, right? But I put the custom trim rod on it. I'm trying to speak it into existence, you know? So if anybody's watching for PRS, like Beverly or Wynn or anybody, yo, we can, we, can, we can do something, you know what I mean? So this is the PRS I'm gonna be using tomorrow. Sweet. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. How do you make music full time? How do you make music full time? Or how do you make a living doing music full time? Is that the question? Um, you have to approach it three different ways, right? Um, you should definitely try to get into session work. You should definitely look at doing playing at a church if you're thinking about playing at a church and then also try to look at playing locally or for a professional artist. You have to have three different tiers because all of it is not going to work at the same time. Sometimes you may just be doing more session work than you're doing anything else. So you have to offset. You also have to be really good with your finances and planning 
thinking kind of off, like deciding like, oh, I'm gonna save this, whatever, because money will be funny sometimes until you get to a place where you get more consistency in your career. So I, I, I try to encourage people to think about doing things at three different tiers, doing some production work, playing locally, um, or playing for a church or something like that, and then also aspiring to play for bigger artists if you're trying to do something for a living. Or you can find some really, some, some good B, C level artists that can really, you can be, you can have a good life. You don't have to play for everybody that you see on TV or records that you hear. So it's, it's a way to do it. You just have to be really strategic about how you do it. Hello, Carrie, uh, Camper for Life. That's what's up, that's what's up. She's beautiful, thank you, <laughs> thank you. How do I get cool gospel patches for my Boston Me 80? If you wanna learn how to get some really good patches for your Boston Me 80, you're a prime candidate for Carrie's Camp. Go to Carrie's Camp, because I talk about everything with the Boston Me 80. Um, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com, and I got you, I promise you. What up, bro, I watch your Instagrams, man. I'm always inspired. I appreciate that, Joe, man. I appreciate that, man. This really means a whole lot. It says, how did you start working with big artists? Um, so it was word of mouth uh, my first time. I remember Fantasia came to Birmingham and they, she was looking for a band. And um, I went and auditioned for one of the promoters. And that's how I got my first hit with Fantasia. But when I went to LA, I moved to LA, I did a jam session and I played um, How Does It Feel? And from that jam session, there was somebody in there that was like, oh man, you're super dope. Yo, Chrisette Michelle needs an acoustic guitar player for this. So I did R&B Divas. And then from there, I was um, at a church playing like something for somebody. And then they said, oh, Tyrese needs a guitar player for St. Kitts, he's headlining. And then from there, so it's just start word of mouth. But people saw, heard, and realized. And I had to be a good person, man. I was on time, I looked the part, had the gear. So it was a bunch of different things that worked at the same time, worked all together. Um, how you ever have I ever had to read music um, I think for one play I had to read music but most of the times they usually kind of give me like um, they give you the stuff to rehearse and then sometimes I make like different chord charts I have to play for a play like later on this year and I don't know if they're gonna require us to read or if they're gonna just do like chord charts where they do like I can break it down to whatever key it is uh, sometimes you have to find a system that works for you so I don't have to read I haven't had to read a lot but I've had to read a few times Someone said nice, sweet, 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 sweet. Uh, it says, what was the question? It would be really cool if Guitar Center showed, showed a carry. Okay, that would be cool, be cool. How has your experience playing um, for theater? How was my experience? It was cool, man. Like we were in a pit. Um, we had to really understand like the play. So understand we had to learn the music, but then watch the play to know where certain cues were like, where different keywords were. Let's know when we had to play a certain song. So that was always kind of cool. I had never done anything like that before. So I was like, I accepted the challenge, which is really cool. Did you start in church or session works? Church, for sure. I started playing in church when I was like 11. I was not very good, but I started in church. I really didn't start doing session work until later on, um, maybe probably after my time in the military, like 25, 26. What is a good first pedal to get into simple effects? Reverb. So I would say good pedals would be a tuner, um, a reverb pedal, an overdrive pedal and a delay. Those are kind of like your four staples that I feel that would be good for any situation. Um, what are you recording on? What do you mean, what am I recording on? Like what DOS am I using or what do you mean? I, can you be more specific in that question? Have you ever played a Schecter guitar? I played Schecter guitars before they kind of started um, rebranding them. So I haven't played one recently. Uh, do you actually instruct new students on chord transitions? Yes. 
That's the benefit. That's why we have so many campers because I actually instruct them. <laughs> if you want to know about it, you should check it out. Go to carriescamp.com. K-E-R-R-Y-S K-A-M-P.com. There's a link that's been put in the um, comments. So you should definitely check it out. Let's go back. It says, what are you recording on for your lives? Uh, the sound is coming out well. I'm using my iPhone. <laughs> I'm not doing anything but my iPhone. Uh, and I have like a little uh, pocket-sized tripod that I'm using, right? So that's all that I'm using. One second. Yeah, I'm, I am using my iPhone. Okay, I saw we missed a couple of things. Greetings from Spain. That's what's up. That's what's up. Any good pedal brands that you suggest? Um, TC Electronics has some good stuff. Strymon has some really good stuff. Vertex has some really good stuff. Um, Keeley has some really good stuff too. Um, I just picked up a K&M seven string Schecter with a Fishman pickup. It's a monster. Mainly if you're playing metal. Sweet. Oh, uh, you put the guitar. Yeah, I mean, because I don't, I mean, number one, I, you can't really hear it all that well. But then two, I don't like to just have my guitars out just because you have to make sure that, you know, the humidity and everything. Just, guitars are very temperamental. Um, how are you liking the Tux and Silver Sky? I personally have not really looked at um, a lot of Silver Skies just because that's not really my vibe. But, you know, it is what it is. So I want you guys to see my little setup. I'm using the mirror. So if you guys can see, can you guys see that? So you see, I have like this, uh, man, I'm gonna try to take it off. So it's just a little tripod, like, right? It's like a little pocket-sized tripod and it's nothing special, but that's what it is. So I literally bought it so I could fit inside of my wallet for situations like this when I have to like just, I'm on the go. How long does it take to practice the guitar? It just depends on what you're trying to learn. If you're trying to learn something like simple like Mary has a little lamb and it's your retention and your comprehension of what you're doing, it may not take you a very long time. But if let's say you're trying to learn how to play a more complex song, it could take you a little while, um, depending on how strong your fundamentals are for your ear, your chord movements, understanding like, you know, the progressions. You know, there's a lot of different factors that go into like how long it'll take you to learn um, something on guitar. Uh, do you like Fender amps? Um, I do. I normally will backline a Fender amp if they don't have any mess of boogies. I'll normally uh, backline a Fender DeVille with 410s. Any opinions on the UAFX pedal? I don't have any opinion. I've never used it, so I can't really say yay or nay either way. So I, I really don't. I've never used it, so I really don't know for sure. Somebody says Shankman tuners also make a good um, smartphone tripod. Sweet. Well, this is good because this, this this tripod is mainly I use it for like just to take pictures too. So it's I mean it's and it fits inside of your wallet. That's what I love about it. It's like a credit card. But I appreciate that suggestion though. You know what I mean? Vox AC 101 uh, for home use. No, I don't use a Vox for home use. So usually if I'm playing at the house, you guys hear it, I'm usually playing through my monitors. Um, I Sometimes I will use my Backcat Lynx 50. Um, and then occasionally I have a, I have a couple boutique amps that I got for like some companies years ago that I, I use. I've never tried the quad core. Um, I've seen a lot of different uh, like demos of it. It looks like it's going to be pretty dope, but I've never used it myself. I have a lot of gear, and I, I try not to buy so much stuff or get so much stuff. Have you ever used an octave pedal? Yes, I've used an octave pedal plenty of times. Tube amps? I've used plenty of tube amps. Like the um, the Bad Cat stuff that I use is all tube. Um, the Quilter stuff that I use is solid state. Fender amps are tube. The Mesa Boogies that I normally backline are tube. So, yeah, I think I have a healthy balance of stuff. I haven't used a quad cortex yet, uh, but Corey Wong, the DSL Sand Company, is fire plugin. Sweet, yeah, yeah, definitely, dope, dope, dope. It's 
Speaking of pickup jazz, I need to call and talk to Sam. Mm. I feel like I haven't, I feel like I've hit a plateau in my plane lately. Any advice on how to get over it? Love your channel and your content. So yeah, that happens for all players. Number one, you have to get around different kind of influences or listen to different kind of music. So if you feel like you're reaching a plateau, but you don't have like something that's gonna kind of push you, you're a prime candidate for Carrie's Camp. So you should definitely check it out. K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P dot com. We help you get over the hump. We help you find that motivation. We help you find that love and that passion for learning and for growing in your craft. So that way you, you can continue to grow in your craft. Um, do you have any um, music projects in mind for the future? Um, honestly, at this moment right now, um, my focus is mainly teaching. I have thought about um, doing an acoustic project, but I've got to find the right kind of uh, producers and the right kind of engineers in order to do that kind of session. But maybe, maybe in a little bit, I may do an acoustic project. Um, are you familiar with the Fender Mustang amp? I think I've played it once, Jessica. I'm not that well versed with it, but I think I've played it once or at least seen it once or twice. Carry too smooth. You're a dope man. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much for answering. Um, I really appreciate it. Man, Chris, man, I appreciate it, dude. Seriously, that means a lot. Do your kids play as well? No, none of my kids really play. Now, my oldest was like dabbling in guitar for a little bit. He's He does more key keyboard, you know, taking piano lessons kind of deal. But like, nah, uh, they don't really play guitar. But he was like interested for a little bit. Minor or major songs? What is your what do you prefer? Doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter. I play all songs. Doesn't matter if they start in a major key or a minor key. Doesn't matter. The way I use my formula, I'm able to play any song, so it doesn't matter. Okay, um, when says when you're in a band, how do you stand out as a guitarist without sticking out like a sore thumb? So that's a great question. So what you have to do is number one, know your role. What's being asked of you as a guitarist? Like, are you asked to solo a lot? Are you asked to chord a lot? Do you have all of the sounds and the tones that they need? Can you recall all of the songs that you ever need to do? Like, that's how you can stand out, and you need to be consistent. Like, your tone is always good. Your your vibe is always good, your own time, you look the part. That's how you stand out without standing out. You don't have to overplay the stuff in order to, to you know, make yourself set apart. If you have good tone, you have good chord quality, you have good re recollection of stuff like that, that's the stuff that people are gonna remember. Have you ever played reggae? Yes, I've played reggae. Any thoughts on the Podgo? Podgo, I've never played it, so I, I don't know. Like. I would say try to listen to as many like, demos as possible to make a you know uh, an informed decision about it. Or if you get a chance to go somewhere to try it out, I would definitely go try it out. Jessica, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. go is basically the same as a helix except it is an extension expression oh yeah i think i've seen it once or twice i honestly i've never used it so i can't really say like how good or how whatever it is but you know what i mean i'm having a problem accessing your website to get lessons oh i'm signed up so miguel if you're having issues i would say email support at carry smoothcom and they can walk you through it um i have a pod go same software as the helix um, from a sound standpoint, but the updates in the firewall months. Oh, it updates the firewall months later. Um, yeah, okay. Got it, got it. Are you doing a world tour <laughs> when COVID is over? James, it all depends, man. Honestly, um, where I'm at kind of in my career, um, it just, it has to make sense. Like before I would just, just kind of hop on just different tours and different situations just because I wanted to kind of get that experience. But now that I've had that experience, 
it's got to make sense for me to kind of be like, oh, this is what I want to do. Or I got to really, really love uh, the situation. So it's a lot of different factors. Um, I was looking into the gospel course. Uh, could you explain a little about the course? So Johnny, it depends on what you want to learn. So we have stuff for people who are trying to learn traditional gospel. We have some CCM stuff and we have some quartet stuff. So it just depends on what you're trying to learn for gospel. We even have stuff that talks about preacher chords, understanding how to play shout music or different kind of praise turnarounds. That's what we, we talk about. Uh, what are your thoughts on playing R&B with P90s? If you've been, um, if you watched anything I've done, if you watched any of my YouTube, if you watch any of my, um, my Instagrams, you'll see that I've, the last major tour that I did with Candle a Day, I took out um, a guitar that had P90s. Primarily, that's what I played the whole tour with. Um, occasionally, I would use, I would use my Strat, but for the most part, I mainly did um, a Jazz Master with P90s, and I kicked every night. So, you ever um, jam with the Roots? Yes, <laughs> I've, I've jammed with the Roots. I've done the Roots Grammy Jam. I played with them. I played with them was probably like four, three or four years ago. Something like that. I even got a t-shirt. I like preacher and shot, shot chords. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We hook you up. It says, when are you, when are we going to see you play praise and worship on a Hispanic church? Uh, whenever I get a call, I mean, y'all give me a call. I will, I'll come do it. I got no problem with it. Been practicing the funk triad routine. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love saying that. I love hearing that. That's the kind of stuff that I love to see and hear. What are your favorite guitars that you own um, and that you also want? All right, so I, I think I have all the guitars that I want, um, but my favorite guitar is my um, Tom Anderson Raven Classic. That's number one. Um, I love my Strat, my American Strat, the one with the stickers on it. I think that's probably my favorite one. And then uh, my DGT, um, I think that's probably one of my favorite ones. But as far as guitars, I don't think I want anything at the moment. Technique is hard, but learning fast. That's what's up. So the, the one thing I love about um, People that learn the techniques, it's just the fact that you got to push through. It's not going to be easy, but it's it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, play something or did I miss that already? So, Chris, I'm not really going to be playing anything because I'm in a hotel. Because I am <laughs> here for work. And my guitar, I don't have anything to plug up to it. I'm not about to plug them in the amp and do all that stuff tonight. It's just not worth it. So, um, this is more of one of these kind of teaching, kind of talking and answering sessions. But we have plenty of, you know, sessions where I'll just be playing, so. Do you own a Gretsch? No, I don't own a Gretsch. Um, I don't. I do not own a Gretsch. Uh, when do you choose to use pedals versus all the time now? Because um, where I'm at, Brandon, um, the Helix is more conducive with what I do every single day versus pedals. And then they're heavy. And then I got to try to transport them versus like the Helix I put in a book bag and I can carry it on a plane versus my pedals. I usually have to check them and then I have to worry about TSA going through and like ripping things apart. And that's very frustrating. So right, right where I'm at right now in my career, uh, the Helix does everything I needed to do. And I've been able to dial in the tones to get it to sound as authentic as possible. I know that uh, you own a few PRSs, so my question is, what kind of PRS would you recommend overall, not just for R&B? <sighs> mm. I believe the Custom 24 can be really cool. I think it's a very versatile guitar. Um, Mark Letiri's guitar, the Fiora, is it's a very versatile guitar as well, so I would say those two. Um, that's the unspoken thing about amps versus modeling issues. Carrying amps suck. Uh, you can put uh, put a Helix quad in. Yeah, very true. So the thing about pedals, pedals are really cool, but it's not it's not the most conducive to travel with unless you're like you're kind of touring and you have like a trailer and you're able to kind of put yourself in there. But like again, it's convenience. Like even with um, 
doing pedals and then having them try to mic your amp, it's just not consistent versus having the Helix. I can go XLR out both and still go through my amp so I get like this crazy studio sound. It's not studio sound, stereo sound. So it's like, it just makes more sense for everything that I do for the style that I play, you know, like, but if you happen to play on maybe, um, like in an area or an arena where you don't really need that kind of stuff, pedals can be super dope. Like I don't, I don't not, not use pedals. I just don't use pedals nearly as much as I would normally do because it just makes more sense right now where I'm at. Do you create your own tones or download others? I create my own tones. So I started with downloading um, some tones. I got some um, really cool stuff from a good friend of mine. And then from there, I modified it to fit exactly what I need. Thanks for asking my questions. You're more than welcome. Yeah, so there are a lot of good um, people that have different patches out there. And then from there, you just modify. I mean, that's really anything that you do, like anything that you get, you should always try to modify to fit what your personality or not really try to contort. Find what works for you um, what, and then massage it to make it sound the way that you want it to sound like, you know. If you're hopping on here and you're brand new to this channel, please do me a huge favor. Um, subscribe, click the bell to be notified. Um, so the way you don't miss out on any of these opportunities. Also, too, if you've ever heard me mention or talk about Carrie's Camp, even on this live or other situations, and you're curious, just go check it out. You can check it out for free. You know what I'm saying? Just see what if you like it, if it fits for you. All you need to do is go to Carrie'sCamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com. There is a link in the comments. Um, if you go through and you scroll through, you'll see it. You see there's a link in the comments. So you should definitely check it out. Uh, I prefer HSS any day over a single call, single call. It's just more versatile to me and it can definitely do a whole lot more. And just for the way that I play in the style and just the comfortability that I need, it's, it just gives me more real estate to do what I need to do. Just like the video, sweet. Okay, hi, Carrie. Um, what do you think are the best guitars to transcribe for Neo So The best guitar players to transcribe? Hmm. I would say me. <laughs> um, I would say um, who's another good guitar player to try to transcribe? If you could transcribe Agape Jerry, he's really good. Chris Payton has got some stuff. Um, Lachaz Holloway has got some stuff. Those are some good start. That's a good way to start. I mean, might make your head spin a little bit, but it's a good way to start. Um, have you ever tried court guitars? No, I've never tried them. I've seen a few around, but I've never tried them. When using a two amp, is SSS or HSS different on how so? HSS has given more push power. Um, it depends on pickups, number one. Um, but yeah, humbuckers are a lot thicker than uh, single coils. Um, so for me, I like the versatility that a humbucker gives me in the bridge, especially when I'm soloing. Um, single coils to me sometimes can be very, very thin, and I don't like that thinness, especially when it comes to you soloing. I like the beefy, beefier tone. I want to be able to melt the paint off the walls. Um, so. so it all depends on the pickups. The pickups is really what makes the guitar the guitar. The, it's like the microphone is the voice of the guitar you know you want to definitely check out the woods and all that kind of stuff but the humbucker for me is just it's going to definitely rock a whole lot more than just a single um coil in the bridge do you take notes or do you remember everything you got to play so um 
sometimes when I'm learning this stuff, I will take notes, but my retention skills are really good because you can't really have, um, for me, the, the styles that I play and the artists that I play for, you can't really have an iPad on stage or like notes everywhere. You just gotta, it's gotta remember. So you gotta, I take notes in rehearsal and then I go back and I really massage and I learn them and I work really hard. Um, is an HSS the same as a humbucker? So what HSS stands for is two single coils, like the single coil, single coil, and humbucker in the bridge. That's what it stands for. SSS is single coil, single coil, single coil, single coil. So like we see a strat, the traditional strat is usually single coil, single coil, single coil. But there are some that are two single coils and a humbucker in the bridge. Uh, what is the key of getting a funky feel? How do you accent the beat? So if you want to learn about some funk, I have some different funk techniques in Carrie's Camp. You're, that's something you should definitely check out. Go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. Uh, do you recommend Army over other branches? It depends on what you're trying to do. Because Air Force could offer some things that the, the Army doesn't, or the Navy could offer some things that the Army doesn't. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. Thanks for answering the question. Love your work. And you're the reason why I play R&B in Paris. Oh, man, that's what's up. That's what's up. Are you able to give some tips on how to play I Want to Know by Joe? Uh, if you want to know how to play I Want to Know by Joe, you should definitely sign up to Carrie's Camp. K-E-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. You should definitely check, sign up and check it out. Been working on the To Me and So Into You, Childish Gambino version. Thank you so much for sharing. You're more than welcome. What tube amps do you recommend for the R&B uh, guitar sound? What tube amps do I recommend? You can get a Mess and Boogie Long Star. You could get a Fender DeVille with four tens. I mean, you can get a match list. There's a lot of different amps that can provide an R&B sound. All right, I'm gonna take one more question and then I'm gonna have to get ready to go. Um, it says you travel on tour right now. I, I'm not on tour, so I'm not on tour right now, but I am traveling for work. Um, I am playing um, for an artist. Thank you. I'm playing for an artist. And so um, I'm not traveling on tour, but I am playing for an artist. Um, Carrie, can you um, advise me about what I should have uh, to do in order to learn if I want to be a good R&B player? You should, de Rudolph, you should definitely go sign up and become a camper. Um, Carriescamp.com, K-E-R-O-Y-S-K-M-P.com. Uh, what are your plans for the upcoming concert season, if any? It just depends on if I'm working. I mean, I've got a few, you know, things that I'm doing for whatever, but like, again, it's got to make sense to me in my career right now because I've done a lot of work, but if it doesn't really make sense, then you won't, you won't find me doing a whole bunch of stuff, whatever, so. But yeah, I love you guys, man. You guys be great. Somebody said Line 6 or Marshall. You're talking about amps. Um, I'm probably going to go Marshall, JCM um, all day. Um, love you guys. You guys take care. Um, and I'm going to try to hop in here tomorrow, but I, I, I can't promise you just tomorrow is going to be super, super busy with this wedding going on, whatever. Um, love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care.